G'day everyone, welcome to this uh, global update for the 7th of September and again in America a uh, little bit of shakiness during the week but again closed at a new all-time stock high. Australian market didn't fare as well, we've got a couple of things that are really uh, against our market at the moment, certainly the iron ore price is, uh, is one of the key ones. Um, so our market definitely underperforming the American market but uh, still the signs pretty positive. Let's jump in and have a look at, um, at what actually happened during the week. Um, so we'll start with the S&P. And as you can see, it finished very robustly on Friday night. We had uh, a little bit of selling uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, a little bit of nervousness in the market um, as probably part of the new, new uh, quarter. But uh, you can see Friday night was a very, very powerful finish. And it also, so that's the S&P 500. It also extended to uh, the Russell 2000 small caps as well. It's obviously not performing as well as the, uh, the major indices, but still no real sign of weakness there at all. So just to summarize, uh, the S&P ended up gaining four points on the week, but it was really the finish on Friday that was very impressive. So a little bit of profit taking, but new all-time highs. Turning to the Australian market, we ended up down uh, 27 points for the week. It was 20 points the week before. And this is uh, really heavily about the major miners, BHP, Rio, Fortescue. And it's because the iron ore price continues to drop. Uh, the iron ore price broke a key support level at $85 or $86 during the week and uh, the, the mining, the iron ore stocks uh, really did get uh, belted. So that's been a major drag on our index, but uh, the best quality stocks, a lot of the, the smaller to mid cap stocks that are in high growth mode and with a high degree of reliability, uh, they continue to march on. So there are still opportunities in the Australian market. Uh, value is certainly another matter. Value is a bit hard to find in the Australian market. Um, but certainly there's, uh, there's been some good gains. So we'll just take a quick look at the Australian market, at the Australian indices. So we'll look first of all at uh, the finance index. So you can see a little bit of selling on Thursday and Friday and there's certainly a bit of sentiment coming into the Australian market that the banks are overvalued. They've been overvalued for some time but that might be just starting to have an, an impact. And we saw a fairly significant sell-off here in early August. We may be at the start of, of something similar this time round. So a bit of a drag from the banks, but if we turn to the miners, you can see the bank's still really in overall uptrend. But if we turn to the miners, uh, the last two weeks has been pretty devastating for uh, prices of the major miners. It's uh, been all downhill. So you roll all that up, and that's what we ended up with on the Australian market. A uh, couple of down days, Thursday and Friday, to, uh, to take us down overall for the week. Just while I'm here, I'll just take a look at um, the precious metals. This was silver, uh, down on the week, but a, not a bad rebound from oversold on Friday night. Uh, this is gold, similar chart pattern, and this is really about the US dollar. Uh, the US dollar index is strong. Um, the, the euro is weak, the US dollar is strong, and so that's forcing uh, commodity prices down in general. This is the weekly price chart of gold. As you can see, I, I had this trend line here last week. There was a very minor break of that trend line uh, during the week, but we almost scrambled back above it by the close. Just looking, I'll just look at this uh, US dollar index. You can see uh, this is because of what's going on in Europe. And you can see just how strongly the US dollar has appreciated against uh, a basket of other currencies of which the euro makes up about 50% of that basket. So gold ended up down $19 for the week, but it really was currency impact only. Uh, it was just the fact that the US dollar was going up. Stocks, however, sold down. So it wasn't a uh, pretty week for gold stocks. Um, Silver is now oversold again, but you'd be a brave person that is trying to pick the rebound in silver at the moment. We've had so many false starts. Uh, I'd be personally, I'd be waiting for silver to actually um, really break into a new 
uh, a new um, uptrend, which means it may be 20 or 30% higher than where it is now, but at least then you'd know what you're dealing with. Now, copper was impressive. Uh, despite the fact that the US dollar went down, I would have expected copper to have uh, fallen quite a bit, but it didn't. It held its ground pretty well. So that's that's an important sign for, uh, for copper because copper is an important indicator of uh, the global health. Crude oil, however, uh, there's plenty of crude oil supplies around. America's ramping up their production uh, dramatically, and I think it's just a matter of time before they start exporting crude oil as opposed to um, petroleum products. And uh, West Texas Intermediate Crude was down sharply to $93, uh, partly on currency and partly on an excess of, um, of oil. So here's the spot copper chart. It's still just holding its ground very nicely. Nickel had a spike up as well, and that's partly because I believe there is some um, rumour that the Philippines may be doing the same thing as Indonesia and, and uh, placing a ban on the export of, um, of uh, nickel concentrate. They try to encourage more manufacturing at home. So uh, nickel much more solid as well. So just to wrap it up, uh, this is the same slide as last week. Nothing has changed. Um, we're in September, it's quite often a volatile month, so is August, but we didn't see too much of that. Um, there are still plenty of triggers for volatility around. It's, it's really mainly around Russia and the Ukraine, uh, but the strength in the American market is just so impressive, and it really does point to a very solid finish to the year. So we might have a bit more volatility in September, typically we do, so I'd still be exercising a, a bit of discretion and this is about positioning yourself for the next six months. There is excellent value still in high growth companies in America, despite some very robust price rises over the last month, in fact, the last year. Um, but it's far more challenging to buy value in Australia. Yes, stock prices are going up, but when stocks are fully valued, that's not really a, a terrific way to go about it because um, those prices could, uh, could come back quite sharply. So for anyone who's not a member of Special Share Education, there is more detail about what we do on our website. And if you want to contact me to discuss your trading or investing, I'm always happy to do so. There's my email address. That's it for this week. Cheers.